taking my cam, my just my iPhone out yesterday, um, and got some pictures of the hills around here, which are already starting to turn brown. And the oak trees around here, um, there are different kinds of oaks, of course. These are coastal live oaks, also known as scrub oak. Um, leaves are oval and they're they're spiky. Enjoy. Yeah, don't know how to get rid of that. Hi, Linda. So these were just some of my inspiration photos. I think we're going to do rolling hills and an oak tree today. How's your week going? Hey, Internet. So these are some of the pictures I took on my way home from Vacaville yesterday. So I thought we'd paint some green rolling hills and maybe some oak trees today, tonight. I actually climbed up to this spot <laughs> in my sundress and tights. Sometime I will figure out what to do about sun glare and my camera, but obviously I didn't get it figured out yesterday. It's okay. So if you're not from around here, that's what around here looks like. That's Vacaville, by the way. Hi, Mom. I'm so glad you made it on. All right, so I know it's a common theme, rolling hills and trees. And um, in fact, my one and only single show I had, <laughs> I called it Mostly Trees. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, just, I, I like painting trees, and they're easy, and it's a nice escape. And that's kind of what this is. And I thank you for the friends who had a conversation with me Friday night about, you know, what, what is it I do here? And it, it's it's to provide an escape. What Bob Ross talks about, this is your kingdom, this is your, you know, this, it's your land, it's your world. Create on that canvas what you want to create, where you want to be, and that that's kind of it. Um, so, let's get going. I've got some things over here. I've got a number of, got a number of brushes out. Um, some I'll use, some I won't use. I like this one, but I really don't use it very often. This is um, was recommended by an online artist, and yes, it's a nice brush and it has a lovely feel to it. Just not my favorite right now. My favorite is this guy right here. This is the number 10 Filbert. And again, it's the one I left in the water too long and the ferrule's loose and I need to glue it or something. And I even ordered another one. It's just not quite the same brush. That happens all the time. Then I still have a number of, of things. I know with the trees, we're gonna need some scruffy, but um, to get the texture, a lot of it is just tapping. You don't, I'm not gonna sit here with a fine brush and go, tink -a -tink -a -tink -a -tink. I don't have the patience for that. Most of my paintings are done in about two hours. The ones I do on you here on tonight are, are done in an hour. Um, so bristly brushes, the, the ones that come in the cheap, craft pack that with the you know or, and sometimes they're not they're very common in the um the oil section but uh, when you go to acrylics they're usually softer and if you go to watercolor then they're super super soft and this is my um num my number six filbert which i also like 
Um, and then a couple more. You can see this one really just looks like a school one, doesn't it? Because it just it, it gets abused, poor guy. And I got you can see I was here the pink where I've there's the camera. I've gotten the paint way too far up in the bristles. You're not supposed to have paint that far up in your bristles because it gets in there and it's hard to clean and it can also ruin your brush, make them stiff. And then another one that's that's angled that sometimes it is just, you know, for really fine, fine um, the textures and, and little dotty things. So <clears throat> the first thing are the hills. So Well, actually, we're going to do the sky first. I was thinking about this guy, and I think I want to do something not exactly plain. The trick is going to be not to mix the blue with the yellow, because then you get green. We don't want a green sky. And somebody said, sky's never green. I think that's not true. If you go look at some of the sunsets, you're going to see some green in that sky. There's there's this there's this hue right in between. Kind of a, I mean, seafoam-ish green. So anyway, here we go. So a little bit of yellow. I even put a little red in there if I'm feeling adventurous. So setting up my palette. There we go. So I've got room for other colors in between here. I usually have yellows and orange, reds and oranges over here. Blues and purples. Um, greens usually go in the middle. Br browns and, and, and the darker ones over here. The, cool, the warmer ones and the cooler ones. I mean, brown can be either. Red can be. All of them can be either. Starting out with white. And I'm going to put the horizon right along here. And my heels, of course, will go up and over that. I have a blow dryer here because sometimes I cheat. <laughs> I get impatient and want it dry quickly. It's not recommended. It, um, you know, acrylic paint. Look, is a form of plastic, changes shape with the heat. But the reason I want some of that yellow, I'm gonna have to wash the brush after I do this, is I want just a little bit, like, just to warm the sky up right there, just a little bit. And that's gonna go down below the, below the hills. All right, now, right out the gate, all right, and into the blue. And mixing that blue right into that white, but not into that yellow. But that's awfully bright. I do want to come it down, so I have some white to I could mix this on my um, palette, too, if I wanted to. Um, some artists, a lot of artists will tell you don't mix the colors on the canvas. Basically, do what you want to do. So just kind of painting with blue and white. And as I was saying, some, some artists will tell you don't mix it on the canvas. <laughs> if it makes you happy, mix it on the canvas. That's, that's the bottom line. Just enjoy what you're doing. Okay, I want to get this blue out of here because I want to address that right there. All right. I'm going to do a little white. Ooh, it's dripping everywhere. Just be careful how I'm blending. And be careful if you're ever sitting next to me <laughs> while we're painting the sky. I can get a little, I can get a little <clears throat> am, uh, ambitious. and splatter my neighbors. Not intentionally. Totally not intentionally. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so there's the sky. Now we do the hills. What I haven't quite decided is if I'm going to do green hills or brown hills or greenish brown hills. I don't want them emerald green, although some of the pictures in that, that clip I showed you um, of the pictures I took on the way home from Vacaville, there were some, or so was the camera, took some really bright green um, uh, 
takes on some of those some of those hills. Just adding some more texture to this guy. It looks a little looks a little um bleh. Need a little texture. Some stratus clouds for Okay. Um okay, let's get on the hills. And I'm not gonna rinse the brush, but I am gonna put it in water, but not for too long. And I'm thinking I'm gonna start with olive. Since we're just kind of making it up tonight. Alright, hills. Oh, a whole lot of carrier in that. How about let's try some one of the dark colors? Oh, I bet I got the same problem in this one. This is the problem with these paints. Um, is when you don't use them, the carrier separates, and so you get a whole lot of the um, of the liquid part and not a whole lot of the pigment. Which, if I was doing oils and I wanted to follow in um, Leonardo's footprints, then um, that'd be great because that's how he got the glow in his painting is to do layers of um, very little pigment and a lot of oil. These are acrylics, but it's a similar idea. That is a really bright green. Okay, do I have any red? Yes. I did bring some red over. So I'm going to use just a little bit of red to tone down this green. So, here's what the canvas has got going on. If I could lift it up without everything running. So we've got the cadmium yellow, the titanium white. That's the olive green. That's earth green, which is a darker green, but it's pretty bright. It's still. And, and, yeah, and some of the, I think that's cerulean blue uh, for the sky. And I just added a dot of, um, let's go more, of, um, oh, which red is this? Yeah, permanent red, I think. Oh, naphthol, crimson, crimson. I was way out. Nonetheless, it's a red. I just, it's, I like it. It's a pretty red. Okay, so when you add green and, um, and red, make brown anyway. So it's just gonna tone down that green into another olive -y color, and I'm gonna add a little white so you can actually kind of see what color we got going on here. It's kind of grayish. I don't know if yellow maybe. Still kind of grayish. <laughs> okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna go with that color and we're, you know, um, figure it out later. Oh, that's dark. And some hills that can Oh, I didn't, I better start up higher because my sky didn't come down. Okay. Yep. I want more blue in that. There we go. That's it. Now, um, this is just blocking in color because when, if looking around the hills out here, um, some of the, you see the trees just kind of disappear into the, yeah, I'm just really in your way when I do that, don't I? Okay, I'll try not to do that. Um, uh, the, um, thought. oh, the um, oak trees. The oak trees go right down into some of those caverns, um, eh, valleys, crevices. What do you call those? So I'm just adding color, mixing all of it, <laughs> just mixing it all up. That's okay. Sunshine, the sunshine. Okay. That is all bright. Oh, and that's dark. Because it, it, the hillsides around here, of course, this time of year, really starting to turn brown. It was 80 something degrees this, this weekend. So even from yesterday to today, to today it was a lot more brown. All 
All right, color blocked in. I'm gonna let that sit just for a little bit. I did add a little yellow to the green down here towards the bottom of the canvas. And turn it over and paint the bottom. This is why I have painting clothes. Because it will wind up all over me. I'm getting better, but I still, you know, manage to make a mess. So I just keep a couple of shirts and a couple pairs of pants here at this video. Or like tonight, I didn't have school, so on Sunday. Um, just came with just dressed in painting clothes from home and came on over. Okay, get those edges. Oh, there's a lot of blue I didn't get. I'll go back and get that. I want that hillside to come up a little higher. So I'm painting it up a little higher and I'm going to bring it back down here. Okay, just to get it. This is probably the biggest difference between um, when Bob Ross was doing painting and um, uh, painting now is that um, all of his were designed, he had, had in mind that you were gonna go out and frame it. You just wouldn't put it on the wall without a frame. And that's not what we do anymore. We'll, we'll just, you know, put a thumbtack on the wall and hang it up which is what, that's what I even do. Um, even here in my studio, the ones that are on the wall, just with the thumbtack. Thumb oh, Nanette, it's super easy. We should paint sometime. Okay, there we go. So now we've got, uh, move it over. All right, so now we've got glow of the hill, glow of the sun and um, sky. But sometimes it doesn't change. Sometimes we don't get those amazing sunsets. And I'm going to have a tree right here, and I don't want, I mean, I want it interesting, but I don't want it to take over the painting, you know, the sky. So that I'm, it's like, wait a minute, is this a sunset or is this about a tree? This is really about a tree. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just, the brush is wet, so I'm wiping it out just to make sure I've got all of, and you can't see that, we're, okay. So I'm just making sure that I don't have any paint left in there. I am going to wash it. I wash my brushes every time I paint um, and get all of the, get everything else out. Um, and this has been soaking longer than I like. I've got three um, buckets of water. I always paint with two. Let's do you. This is a filbert and it says it's a number six. You see, this is what I'm talking about, people. Um, this is a number six. Where's the camera? There we go. This is a number six in this brand, and this is a number six in this brand. They're a little different. There is no standardization in the um, when it comes to sizing brushes. Um, so you, you know, that's sometimes how I wind up with so many of them that say they're the same one is because it's like I'll, I'll look online and like yep that's the brush and i'll order it and it's like nope that wasn't the brush so um i'm gonna add some reflection of that sun going down right here in the hills so that you know you kind of can't tell where the brightness of that sunset is, of that sun going down is, and where the hill starts. Add a little dab of white. Because I do want that. I have too much on it. And I want it just kind of 
in this valley. And I'm glad that that green is still kind of wet because I, I, I want it to kind of blend in. Oop! Except that that's where there was too much um, carrier and not enough pigment. Pulled the pigment right off the, the canvas. Actually, this dark will be great on the back side of these hills where the shadow is. It's going to be a little bit in there. Anyway. So, so you've got that yellow glow coming down into the valley. Right there. Now, that, this is one of the things that's super easy to overdo. Super, super easy. In fact, I want to go back over it with a little bit of green. Just touching the green because some of the some of this yellow is too much yellow in one spot. I want it to look like either wildflowers or just the reflection of that sun off of um, off of the foliage. Mm -hmm. A little tacky. Okay. okay, let's do a little bit. Sun right there on that base of that hill. Now, talking about those trees and going down into the valleys, this is where I want one of my spiky brushes. So, very bristly, very irregular, very used, perfect. Let's see if we can let's see if that's what's better. Is that better? And, um, oops, I want just a little touch of Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is one of my favorite alternatives to black and also, um, dioxazine purple. And so, oak trees, off in the distance, little rounded things, just kind of touch and move, touch and move sort of stamping and you want it to trail off. Don't drag the brush. Tap and go. So there we've got a little oak grove off on that hill. And we've got some here. And they go down in between that crevice of hills. That crevice between the hills right there. That's what I think. We gotta have some taller ones up in there. There we go. Alright, I'm a little happy with that. I'll put some lighter color in there, but not a whole lot. Let's do let's do some over here. Got some good trees right there. some of that same color and I'm going to just lighten it up a little. And I'm not going to use yellow because I want to save yellow for when it's closer to us. I am just adding, I'm just adding some of that olive green in. This is a color I mixed up with Payne's Gray and some of that earth green. And quite frankly, I did add just a touch of um, that Mount Dollar Christmas Crimson. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is because with crayons, with colored pencils, you, you just draw lighter and you get a lighter color. 
with paints, you actually same with um, cross stitch or quilting. If you want another color, you've got to have another color. So I'm going over the trees just on the side where the light would hit them. Not in those guys, they're too far away. Oops. Way too much. Okay. Oh, it's not quite light enough. That same color with just the tiniest dot of white. All right. I will explain it as being the new growth on this tree. There we go. I'm a little happy about that. Just remember, um, once you've added white to a color, you can never go back to it being as dark as you had it before. So if you want some of that same color before, you're going to have to mix it up. Because I want some more right here in this portrait. It just got all of a sudden inundated. How are we doing? Okay, let's, let's leave that. Nah, let's not leave that. The reason I don't want to leave that is because a lot of times those oak groves are so dense you don't see you don't see skylight through them. You just you don't. They're just they're just dense. Okay, now one thing I'm gonna do before I do the tree up front is go back and um, uh, re-smooth out some of these hills. All right, back to my number six, my big number six filbert. And I'm gonna pick up some of that, some of that um, earth green. And I'm gonna mix in some olive, and actually I'm gonna mix in some of that tree color. Because I don't want it quite so bright. And I'm just going to, oh, I'm gonna add a little more green to that. Maybe just a touch. look like they're down in that valley. See? Kind of makes a difference, doesn't it? Let's do that one up there. Just because that one does need to be lighter. To be lighter, but it also needs to cover. So if your paint is too transparent, you need to figure out it's a different way. But this olive has all that carrier in it. Yeah. All right. One more shadow on the back side of that hill. Maybe some shadow over here too. And on the edge. And you got my head again, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that spot where it didn't quite get covered. Where it got covered and then it was coming up. There we go. That's fine. Kind of 
Okay. The bulk of the tree it is the um is the the what do you call it, the crown. Um, they've got fairly short trunks. When you look at the tree, it's on um, this big bowl. Um, oh, maybe I can hold on. So um, most of the tree, most of the tree, and then I left this one on the top of the hill. And it's even got a swing. Um, is and I'll find out who whose picture it is and thank them and give them credit. Um, it most of it is the foliage on top, and that's not true for every tree. There. Okay, I'm back. Here we go. All right, so I'm thinking oak tree here. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Now, the other thing is, I, and I saw this gentleman online, and he's, he's, he was doing a great job of, of teaching what he was teaching. I disagreed with some of this stuff, but that's my own personal way that I paint. And I get the feeling that he's actually studied. <laughs> I have it. Um, so, you know, I... But you let, every time I watch somebody, I learn. And that's the important thing, is is just, you know, learn what works for you, learn what's, and above all, make sure it's fun. If it's not fun, why are you doing it? So, all right, let's, let's, before that, I've, got, I've just gotta fix this over here at the bottom. There we go, okay, I think I'm a little happier with that. edge a little more. There's another shot of my head. Now I could just leave it like this and that would be a decent painting. And it would hang somewhere nicely and just be a very nice huh, place to go. Which is to me a good reason to paint or have paintings around. And I was about to tell you that the bark, this guy who was painting and he was he was demonstrating how he paints a tree and it made a lot of sense. I got hung up on the fact that to me oak oak tree bark is gray and he was painting it with like burnt sienna or something I'm like, <laughs> I was having a bit of a connection anyway but to him that's what made sense to him and so I do have some burnt sienna no this is burnt umber which is even darker than burnt sienna burnt sienna is more of a it's lighter in this. Okay, here we go. Note to self, next time check caps. So I am gonna, because it's it's not entirely, ooh, and you're running too. Why is everybody running? Because it's hot? Anyway, okay. So I am gonna mix a little bit of the um, Payne's Gray with the burnt umber. But that's way too dark. That's way too dark. So what I need is a little white. And then I can see if I like it, if it's a warm enough gray for me. Because Payne's gray is very, very blue. It's, it's got kind of a blue base. And um, so I, 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 ivory, ivory black might have been a better choice because ivory black is, oh, I like that though. Ivory black is, um, <clears throat> A warmer black. Okay. So I'm doing this kind of following that that one with the that I showed you with the swing on. Just getting the structure of the large limbs. I think there's got to be one here. You need that really pretty get one on there. That's the way it goes. It happens all the time. I need it a little wigglier. I need a little more water in that paint. I need it to flow just a little better than what I'm getting. There we go. And I want one coming out this way. Now, this tree, something obviously happened to it and it split off. Not all oak trees have split. Um, ooh, and now I'm taking it right off. That's not what I want either. Okay, so using the side of the brush, now I'm gonna do just some small, and just kind of outlining 
how far is this tree going to go? Okay, so it also gives me a point of where the clusters are going to be because those clusters are round. But before we get too far, I want this to dry because I want to add some accent to the trunk before I get going with um, the foliage. And before I add the accent, it's got to be a little drier. I've got to stop painting on it. <laughs> Alright, so I think we're good. I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're going to start with the dark color. Um, now if I wanted to take longer, I've only got about 10 minutes left with you, but if I wanted to take longer, I would go back and do some more details with the, with the branches. Oh, I do want to put in some highlights. Hold on, let me, let me just do that real quick. I'm just adding some white to that tree color and hopefully I got enough water out of this brush. You know what? Since I'm a little worried about that, I'm using the other brush. Okay. A little bit of tree color, which is Payne's Gray, Burnt Umber, and a little more, a little more Payne's Gray. There we go. And we're going to mix in some white um, just to make it a lighter gray. So we got a lighter gray going on. And then that is going to be where the sun is hitting the bark. Obviously, it's on that side, and it's on that side, and it's right there. It might even be coming from underneath. Oops, you got my head again, didn't you? Coming from underneath on that side a little bit. Ah, maybe it's coming underneath there. And maybe some of these things you can see with the highlight doesn't make much of a difference, does it? And make those make those squiggly. Make those branches squiggly. And have a rounded part there. Okay, now to do the big the bulk of the color, I'm gonna use my big number 10 filbert. Alright, so number 10. And we're back to the dark, the olive green and the earth green. And just a touch of that red. Okay, this is going to be the dark part. And it's going to be, I'm going to have dark and it's going to come all the way down. And I'm, I'm just using the round part, that's why we're getting those round groups of leaves and you don't want to do it like you're stamping but it's kind of you know touch and move touch and move actually you know what in the sake of time I am going to paint so goodbye darling hill you served us well I know that you come up around here like this I'm gonna paint you down like this I'm gonna up around this comes around here like that, nice big globe. This comes around here also, and right into there. All right, now, fill that in. I'm just gonna fill it in. Not worried about the sky showing through. Bye, trees. <laughs> you know they're there. And they'll show through a little bit. Adding, blocking in color. That's all we're doing right now. We're just blocking in color. And I need some more green. A little red green. A little bit of that red. A little bit of that olive. Just getting the shape of that tree. And just by doing that, I've got some got some texture going on. And it comes 
Oh my gosh. All right, now for the highlight. Let me just get this one more. Just some texture just by tapping that I've got some texture. Now, where the sun is, um, okay, so just even tapping with the brush and it's coming up off the canvas, even just doing that is adding some texture. So, yeah, whatever works. Remember, this is just a big adventure. You get to do what you want to do. So I took some of the color that I just put down and I'm just adding some yellow back in to create a lighter green. And it's going to be, now it's going to pick up because that other color is so wet right now. It's going to pick up some of that darker color. So just keep going back to it. Keep adding yellow or whatever you think you want. And it's kind of wherever the, um, the sun kind of shines through. Like over here, I want it really yellow <laughs> because there it is. some over here. There's some sun coming over, over here too. All right, so go ahead and add some texture in wherever you think you want some texture in. And yes, that tree did destroy most of the things we worked so hard on and so often is the case that that happens. In fact, my, my sister pointed it out. I showed her a picture in, in progress one time. She goes, oh, that's pretty. And then I showed her what happened. She goes, oh, because <laughs> I just painted over everything I worked so hard to put into the, you know, the background. But you know, it's okay. I know it's back there. I may still go for a picture. All right. And the last thing is to sign it. So, Oh, goodness, did I even bring anything to sign it with? Not really. Okay, we are going to pretend you are a fine point brush. Wipe off some of that. I'm going to use that same color that we just used on the tree. Add a little water. Okay, load up that brush. And my signature is always the same. It's just my blue with my own connected. And then the year. I'm just going to do 20. And that's it.